serialization, deserialization, <coughs> linking and embedding for the like, related posts if you have it. And rest, rest best practice uh, that were built up over the course of years. And other external classes you can extend from. Let's talk about endpoints. So, like I said, the second phase of the REST API merge has not come yet. And, um, so you, in order to do that, you actually have to extend your, um, you have to actually have to include the REST API plugin in order to build any custom endpoints. So uh, building a lot of, most of the times, if you have a custom post size or custom fields that you created, then you will probably, chances are you'll need to create your custom endpoints to actually leverage all those information, because out of the box they're not really available. So, how do we build it? So, first of all, their basics. So, let's say I, wanted, I want to register my custom endpoints. So, like, I want to register routes that are called WPJs. So, all the REST API URLs, the routes, actually start with WP, WP-JSON, and it follows by the namespace that you want to put, assign, and then the routing, routing mess that you want to assign. So, for me, in this example, I want to create a routes for the projects. The projects, and here is a custom custom content type that I created. It contains like the project information, some details about the uh, project, and it has custom fields that are um, stored in serialization and in serialized format. So the first row, if I call it first um, first route, I want to display all the projects that are in the system. Second of all, of course, I want to be able to access individual individual project, either by the ID or by the slug or the post name. So I want to register those two, three routes. And so in order to do that, to register a route, you want to create a REST API init hook, so add action, REST API, uh, REST API init. And on the callback function, you can register a route. And for this example, I'm actually going to be creating it as a class space. Um, model. And so from, on my callback function, I'll be calling the, the class file that I have defined all this information, and I'll instantiate the class, and then I'll call the register route method where it's actually the registration happens. So in my class, I want to leverage all the REST API classes that are there so that I don't have to, I don't have to rebuild everything. And that a lot of these are already available, so there's no reason for me to create anything. So, I want to use REST, WP REST server class and controller class in response, and also the error class so that it will send the appropriate uh, status code and everything. And I'll be extending the WP REST controller um, so that all the default methods or, or doesn't need to be recreated, like I said before. So in the project controller, in my construct, I actually define my namespace, which you saw before that it's going to be project v one For my endpoint, it's version one. So I'm just calling it as V1. And the rest space, the route, rest space is, uh, I'll be using the rest, the, the project in a URL a lot, so it's going to pretty much create a class so that I can just reuse it. And then I have a, the project defined class on this theme or plugin was um, that I created the class for all the available, all the, all the variables that I want to reuse. So like that's calling that, reusing that variable. In the registering route, like I said, the first one, I want to register the, the entire project one. So you will, you will use the register rest route class, and you will define, you, you'll put your path, which is the namespace, and then the rest space, and then projects, like, like you saw before. And on the, call, on the method call, I'll, like I said, I want to reuse WP rest server class and then all the variables that are already defined there. So I'll be using the WPRS server's readable variable. So to kind of give you a cheat sheet of what each one is, readable is get, creatable is post, editable is post with patch, bootable is delete, all method is just all of the above. You could just use get, but then whoop, I want to use it, everything that's already available. Now the callback get item, so that's where you do all the queries in, uh, for Whatever, whatever thing, the, the data that you want to display. And then permission check is where you check the permission if you have access to the endpoint that you, endpoint for the route or not. And very similarly, the next one as well is uh, it's just 
just uh, registering by the slug, so the post name. So by defining that slug variable there, that I can actually call when I uh, when I get to my call that function, I can identify that you are on the route as a, a variable, so I can kind of call around and slug to just see what's in that that you are out. Um, similarly, callback get item is where you actually query and compare uh, your data to the response. And before you get to that, you actually do the permission check. Um, and then I'm reusing the, the variables that are already there from the WQ, WQ REST controller class because class, I'm not doing anything fancier than Some more, and like I said, I wanted to add the ID as well. Uh, uh, by the, I want to add the raw code by calling the ID as well. And I put the user ID as an optional parameter there, which I can I put it there so that I can show some example on different types of permission check. So it's just there for that. And also, also some update. So for this one, it's the same route, but it's going to be the the post or the yeah the post uh, up, uh, method, so which will be updated. So, current part, so the callback function for the route. So this is for the individual individual project one. So on the request, since both uh, get by ID or get by slug actually will be pretty much doing the same thing. Um, I don't know if you noticed before that I was, I'm actually calling the same callback function here. So in the callback function, I'll check if there's an ID or slug, uh, which is a post name. Um, if not, I can't really query it, so it's going to send out. Error. So I'll be using the WP error class, but it will actually prepare correctly for the for the pull request. Uh, if I do have it, I'm going to create my uh, WP query parameter. So for post type, like I said, it's a custom post type called PD underscore project that that I created. And if there's an ID, I'll also filter by ID. If there's a slug, I'll filter by post name. And I'll query using WP query. If I have post. I'll go loop through and then sanitize, so that, that prepare item for response is where I sanitize the data so that I can put it into the format that I want on the, the, on the response. This is, um, as I mentioned before, I do have a custom fields that are in serialized, uh, that are serialized, so I want to make sure that they're unserialized so that I can, just, I can send it to the response in the correct format. And I'll do the WP reset post data to make sure that it doesn't affect the main query. If I have data, I'll send the response with the 200 status uh, by using the, the REST response class. And um, if not, it's going to throw an error. So in the prepare item for response, so that's where I sanitize my data to make sure that it's in the right format for the presenting the response. So I'll, for this, I'm specifically more interested in the custom fields that I have. Um, and uh, make sure that it's unserializing the custom fields correctly. So, and also I want to make sure all my custom fields are embedded into MetaArray or, uh, or nested into MetaArray. Meta so that's all that uh, all that logic is happening in this function. So the permission check. This is a pretty simple permission check example. So for the display. Uh, the view for the project response is that I don't really care that much that if, if um, so it's like uh, so I don't want to give too much restriction on who can view or not. So, but this kind of gives an example that if you're wanting to do it by user base, like you saw that that I uh, created the user variable at the end of the, the route, that you can check the user by uh, you can get the parameter of the user ID and see if the user has an ability the capability of edit post in order to see it. But that's just an example, but I, most of the times that if it's not there, I want to make sure that it's available. So that's the uh, checking part. And if um, for some reason you're just, um, you don't, you're not sending the user ID, but you just want to make sure that user, the current logged in user has ability, you can just do the current user can and check the capability of it as well. So if all goes well, if you have the right permission, Query correctly and have the data. So it's a sample output of what I call um, from that URL for specifically for sending by the slug. So for this, uh, the slug client point was that slug is fully hooked, and then if you send it, you get all the post custom post information, regular post output, and then you can see that in the meta that I I nested all the custom fields in the meta meta uh, array. So that's showing up. So security is talk about authentication. So for WordPress, the WQ REST API commonly used 
types of uh, authentication. First one is the cookie authentication, which is included in the 4.4, uh, including WordPress 4.4. And if um, you want to do the other more, if you want to use OAuth, you can either create your own OAuth or use OAuth on a plugin that's already available. Or if you want to do a base or password of authentication, you can also leverage the base off the plugin, or of course you can write on your own as well. So which authentication is right for you? So if you have your if you're calling your REST API inside your site, so it's, if it's internal, the cookie authentication is sufficient. And, but if you have external sites, so like if you have like a node or any client site that's sitting there and you just want to do like a headless WordPress type of thing, you want to make sure you have like a more authentication than that. So you have the OAuth, OAuth authentication password or basic authentication is recommended. So how do you use the cookie authentication? So cookie authentication is a basic, basic authentication method included in WordPress. That's uh, but you want to make sure that you don't run across the cross site with password or issue. So you want to make sure that you know, to avoid that, you can send announces similar to how you usually use the in WordPress as well. So this is one of the way that you can actually use how to do that. So when you're queuing your JavaScript where you do all your Ajax call, you have your um, input. Yeah, you're registering, you're, you're entering your class, and I'll, I'll put it with that with gameplay. And then I'll send some of the variables that I want to, so that I can reuse, I can actually utilize inside that script by sending it as, um, in a, with a globalized script. And um, all the variables that I'm defining there, it's going to be a pen it's going to be prefixed with a gameplay, which is the gameplay, the, the second variable that are, uh, are being sent with a globalized script. So I want to leverage the, the REST URL, which is the root, and then you can see that I can just call the REST URL and then send it as a root. And the other, other URLs is so that I don't have to hard code it in my JavaScript. But the one I wanted to focus on was the nonce. So since it's already included in the forms, you can just call WP create nonce and then send the WP REST as parameter to create the nonce for you. Uh, for you. And I'll put some of the things that I'll need in the, in the script and send it as well. So it's a sample um, script for how I use it. So for this particular sample is that there, I have a column on the left and the right. So based on what you click on the left column, it renders and uh, it renders the uh, re-renders the, the, the page on the right column. So you can see that the first I'm getting all the variables from the left, and I'm calling the the, the, the custom endpoints. Um, so like I said. The, variables that are assigned before by sending the WP localized script that I have the root, which is a REST API base URL, which is up to like WP-JSON. So, and then you assign the, the namespace that I assigned for the, my custom endpoints and the routes. So I'll have my REST API URL as a gameplay.root. So it's prefixed with, prefix with root. And then if I send, to send the nonce correctly, so I'll stop before I send the actual Request and I'll, I'll be appending it, appending the nonce there so that I might make sure that the nonce is there. And then on success, I'll, so the success call that function will render whatever needed to be done to render the right column. And I'll fail, it's going to give some appropriate message on the right column and render it. So here's a different example we to do. So, like I said, I, I remember that project content type that I created. I wanted to make sure that each project has a different has a different access for different people. So I wanted to authenticate per item instead of the, per the entire application. So to do that, so I like to uh, so meaning that like the, the project A, uh, so I, I didn't care too much about the, the fact that they can view the information, but to update the project information, I want to make sure that they don't have access to update the other project that you don't have access to. So to do that on the update, so before I get into this actually, so on project creation when I'm creating a content type, I'll actually create uh, an API key that's generated and then assigned to the project. So each project has a unique API key that 
condition um, assigned to it, so they can put whatever information on there. Um, so they will have their specific API key per item. So when I call it a project, I also append the API key parameter. So in on the update permission check, I'll make sure that I actually have the correct API key for the project. So that get by key function will validate the API key parameter I just sent against the project's API key in the system. So if I if it go, if it's, it matches, it's going to do whatever it needed to do. If not, it's going to run error, and you don't have access to that. So to sample get API key I'm querying it with the WP query to make sure that it matches the API key for the project. So all of these blended together, I'll show just a couple of examples. So this was one of the sites that we have to build that it's a game a prediction game site. So the top carousel was um, the, the list of categories. So each category has a nominees that you can rank in different ways. And um, and you can bet different different amount of uh, money or the, I think it's their money, but it's just a, it's not really a bunch of dollar money. So by clicking whatever's on the uh, on the category, it'll render the left column or even possibly right column if you already played this game and you want to just update it. So that everything is pretty much happening in Ajax and uh, on the client side. So and then whatever you click on from the left, and then you can rank it differently on the right, and then you can save and go back and delete and change everything. So this was all done with the custom API, custom endpoint. Um, on the first API, and then all these were also custom post types so with a lot of custom fields, so that we all done in that manner. This is another example. This looks like a pretty simple WordPress site. This actually lives at WordPress.com um, But the difference is that this is, none of this data actually is inside the, in the system. So like all the, so there's a parent site that, uh, this is a, one of the verticals of this site. So the parent side is where all the content management was uh, done. So for this, they, they wanted to make sure that all the editors are putting information on parents. And so the parent side meaning that it's not the parent-child type theme type relationship, but there's a main site they want to handle all the content from. So all the, the content will be created with the menu, even the menu, everything is created there. And it's pretty much sending the data in JSON format to pretty much render as a separate site, because it says a completely different book. To kind of keep it as a separate. So pretty much menu was a, a, a custom endpoint. All the article was custom endpoints, and they had a lot of different custom contents, and then all the custom fields. So it was very complex data to to contain all the information that I needed to, to put into the site. So everything was pretty much done in that Ajax uh, and the, the REST API. So, there are some useful links. Some of the, the links are pretty obvious. The REST API documentation link and WordPress uh, site. The, so this made the WordPress.org is where the core contributor all the nonsense, announcements for what's going to be included in the, in the WordPress core and what's going on with the new WordPress is kind of announced there. And then if you want to contribute to the core, then they have a good uh, documentation on how to do it. And coding standards, if you're a WordPress developer, probably already know or you should be following this and especially if you want to get into open stuff on PAP development they're very uh, they're very strict on coding standards so they actually separate it into PHP, CSS, JavaScript and all the different categories and some some REST uh, REST API specific links. Okay so there's my contact information if you have any questions at the end uh, later on get to it. I have my contact information for the company. And you follow us at Endeavor IC on Twitter and LinkedIn. And you can get the slide up. I'll, I'll be posting, I think I already posted the slide up there so you can get to it and post that link. Uh, I don't know if I have that much time left for the question. Five minutes. So I have five minutes for the question. Any questions? Yeah. Um, in regards to the nods, Nonsense with security. Um, one of the kind of core tenets of nonsense is that um, they are not necessarily trusted. Um, that the nonsense can always be compromised. So if that's the case, um, how other than passively just what I do with nonsense, how else do you secure that position? Or if you just use it to get education? There are more. Uh, I haven't used that. I was wondering how security is really using it right now. Just okay. 
running from the same site. So if you're logged in on the front end, it's similar as the cookies that are there that we log in that get sent. Those are sent in the same way when you're doing an API request. It's always on the same site. So the nonce is only there to uh, assure the user that they're the ones initiating this action. It's not the actual means of authentication. The means of authentication is still the same old cookie-based authentication built in the current So it's still secure. 